Hey guys, welcome to the Miss Lillian's page. I am Krista from Litter to Glitter, furniture artist out of Barry, Texas. I am going to show you today how to epoxy, how to epoxy a top. And just so you know, you can tint your epoxy with Miss Lillian's, the um, hippie dippy glaze. I always want to call it hippie days glaze. I don't know why, but I have to stop and go, it's hippie dippy glaze, Krista or your metallic glazes. But I'm going to show you guys how to epoxy pour and also how to use Miss Lillian's. Now we have had um, a day here and I am using my son's phone because my tablet decided to do an iOS update five minutes before I went live. Yay! So there's going to be a lot of moving parts. This may be a longer video, but we are going to get through it together. Okay. So the first thing is I want to show you guys, I'm going to tilt my camera before I get started to show you what we're doing and I'm going to mix and then I'm going to move the camera again. So y'all remember that piece right there. This is the fairy piece that Sue and I are working on the mushroom piece. And this is the top we used. Oh, so many colors on the top of this. And then Sue last week, bless her. She was here. I miss her. Um, she did the wood graining. So you, if you want to know how to do this fairy wood, wood grain, make sure you go back. Um, what was it? Wednesday night, last Wednesday night, and you will learn how to use the graining tool. So in order to keep this nice, I'm going to put you guys back up. There we are. See if I can get this a little straighter. I don't know. Um, an epoxy, one epoxy pour is equal to the, the protection of 20 coats of varnish. So, and I love this. And also using the epoxy is going to make these paint colors absolutely pop. So we also use gilding jewels. Then we, we put down the paint. We use some gilding jewels on it, some glitter jewels, and we sealed it. And then Sue did the wood graining. So here's what you're going to do. It doesn't matter to me what brand of epoxy you use, but let me go over some of the tips for me to set up to do an epoxy pour. Step one, make sure you don't care about the clothes you're wearing. Ta-da! I'm even barefoot um, yeah, in here because uh, I have destroyed a pair of shoes by epoxy getting on it. Secondly, I don't know if I can get the camera down all the way, but we are going to look and I'm going to show you, see the plastic on the ground. And also I have completely wrapped my piece in plastic and I've tucked it up underneath. Now I made sure that the plastic wrap is not bunched up underneath of my feet. The reason you do that is as it drips off the sides, if you've got pieces exposed of your, of your furniture piece, the epoxy could drip on that. That's happened to me before. And this is the way I found to do it. So what I've done is to get this piece is I bought this plastic drop cloth and it comes in a roll. And then I stretched out how much I wanted on the floor, cut it, and we spread that out. That's my base. That's protecting my floor. Then I wrapped it around the piece out of my roll and cut it so it overlaps on the side. So as you're wrapping, I want it to overlap on the edge. That way I know I've got it completely covered. And then you tuck it up underneath. That's going to protect your legs of the piece, make sure nothing gets drips down on that. You don't want the drippies on it. Okay. And I've got a couple of pieces back here that I'm going to do some of the colored glaze on. I'm going to use the glaze to tint my epoxy, but on this piece, we want it to be clear. So all of my beautiful colors pop through. Also, I've made sure I've got my A and my B open. I'm using, what is it? Famo wood glaze coat. Uh, you can pick that up at Home Depot. Uh, but any of your clear epoxies, then I've got my jugs that I'm going to be pouring my A and my B to, and then I'm going to mix it. When you mix it, you're going to hear me. I set up my Google home here 
and I will set my timer because you have to stir it for six minutes. So when I get to that point, you'll hear me say what I need to say. I don't want to do it now because I'll set a timer. I didn't want to want to do. And then after I mix it, I will pour a little bit into a smaller one and tent it to do the pour on this. Okay. Also, pro tip, if you have a friend that's in the medical field, especially in surgery, not sure if you're aware, but surgical gloves have an expiration date. They're sterile, but they have an expiration date. And so I have a girlfriend of mine who is a nurse in a surgical unit, and they have to throw gloves out. And so when they go out of date, she says, Krista, what do I do with this stuff? And I said, I'll take the gloves. I'm not paying for my, my gloves. So I will, uh, let's see here, get my gloves on. And so I've already taken a set out of the, this is going to protect my rings, protect my hands. And I am, I should have taken, I, well, I never take off, I, I know better than that, I never take off my bracelets or my rings. So there is a right hand glove and there is a left hand glove. Make sure your hair is up because anything that gets into this epoxy, if you do not get it out before it cures, it's staying. It's staying. There's nothing you can do. So, Dr. Krista, woohoo! Let me get to comments real quick before we go. Um, Ann is watching. Hey, Ann. Sue's here. I'm here watching you excited. Uh, Ann says, hey, pretty lady, call me when you get a chance. We'll do uh, approximately 12 colors so far. Two shifter jewels. Yes, ma'am. Chastity's on with us. Annette's on with us. Hello, Annette. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm running out of these jugs. All right. So what I'm going to do, usually I would use these smaller ones, put part A in one, put part B in another, and then mix it into a big one. That's what I should do, but I'm almost out of my jugs, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. At least I'm honest about it. So I want to make sure that when I pour A and B, now B on this set is your hardener. Make sure you read the, I call them destructions. Read your destructions for your epoxy. Make sure that you know which one is your hardener. Usually on epoxies, B is your hardener. If for any reason you do not get exact measurements, please make sure you've got more B than A. B is your hardener. If you don't have enough hardener in your epoxy solution, it's not going to set up. Also, I have turned the air conditioner off on this side of the house. You don't want to do this when it's really cold in your environment. Um, also, you, honestly, I don't like doing it when it's really rainy because the moisture in the air can also make your epoxy cloudy, and we don't want that. So, I am going to pour my A, and watch, I'm getting down, because I've got my levels here, and when I pour them, I want to make sure that they are. Now, I am going to pour eight ounces of each, because I know that 16 ounces of this epoxy will do what I need to do. Okay, so I've got eight ounces right to my line of my A. Now I'm going to go back with my B. This is part B. I am going to put it in this one and I am going to get it, let me get it turned so I, I'm down at the level. It's just like when you're cooking, if you're looking down, you might get but make sure you're kind of eye level with it. Pour in eight ounces. And I'm just going to go a couple of drops over of my B. Because I want to make sure, if nothing else, I've got more B than A. Just a couple of drops. So, before I get to doing... Chastity says, uh, epoxy on hair tips is not pretty. No, ma'am, it is not. Sue says, we know firsthand all about measurements. Hush, Sue. Yeah, I messed up some when we were at the show. I was so busy and people were talking. 
So I am going to pour A into B. And I have got, put that out of the way. I've got my stir stick. I'm going to make sure I get as much of, get it all out because we want all of the ooey gooey goodness. All right. Now, when you do this, it's going to be a little bit cloudy. And now you've got to stir. This is where your Google Home comes in. Watch this. Hey, Google, set a timer for six minutes. All right, six minutes, starting now. And now y'all get to, it's going to be, I don't know if y'all can see. No, i got to put the camera down. Um, let me get the camera down. Because I want you guys to see everything. You can see how it's a little yellow. And you're just going to keep stirring, keep stirring for six minutes. Six minutes. Let me get you. Well, I might as well leave you guys there because that's our, well, that's not our next step. But I'm just going to sit it here and stir. And as it keeps going, it'll become clearer. I do have my heat gun set up off to the side. And if you feel the outside as the chemical reaction happens, it will become warmer to the touch. And that's perfectly normal. One of the precautions I have taken is I have barricaded my studio so the dogs can't get in here. And that way, because when it hits the ground, you don't want your dog or cat to come in. One, get it on their fur. Two, you don't want them to lick this while it is wet. So we have barricaded the studio. No doggos in the studio today. Um, you can see it's getting clearer as we go and we've got four minutes and 30 seconds left while i'm stirring let me see if i can get over here to the comments uh sorry guys renee says thank you karen for telling me about krista being on tom got away from me oh renee's on hey renee yes uh karen says she loves working with epo epoxy and so we are still going. Now, once the timer goes off, I am going to take a little bit of this epoxy and put it off to the side because I want to tint it, like I said. So I mixed it all in one. And then I will show you guys some cool stuff. And yeah, your hand's going to get tired. I still got three minutes and 30 seconds. I know this is like watching paint dry, guys. I'm sorry, but this is this is what you have to do. This is the boring and the, the boring part. Oh, your hand gets tired for these big ones. And you just keep going. So if you have any questions, go ahead and pop them in and I will be sure to get to them before the end of the video. See, it's getting, still getting, it's getting clearer. You're going to have air bubbles, but I'm going to show you how to get the air bubbles out. But like I said, one coat of epoxy is equal to 20 coats of varnish. So this is going to put a nice rock hard top on my piece of furniture so if anybody sets down a drink sets down you know they come in throw their keys on top of it this would be great to put on like your husband top of well top of any dresser kids husband anything it would be great for that i'm scraping my sides making sure i'm getting it off the walls and i'm still stirring We've got two minutes and seven seconds. And stirry, 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 stirry. Here we go. Come on. One minute. My hand's tired. 
but this is an absolute great way to protect when you do any of your tops. I wish I could afford to do epoxy on all of my tops. Unfortunately, you know, I'm not made of money, but you can always go back years later and add epoxy if you paint it and you just can't afford an epoxy top right now. It doesn't have to be done this second. You can always go back and add it later, which is perfectly fine to do. Uh, one minute, 15 seconds. As I'm stirring, let me go over again to my comments. Bart Sue Owens, I almost missed this again. Oh, Tammy Martin's on. Hey, Tammy. Renee says, but you can entertain us while you stir. Tammy said she glittered me. Thank you. Thank you. Sue, I'm not sure what you meant by I can't. I can't. I can't. What did, I didn't see all of that. Hold on. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm not sure what that's in reference to. So, it, this does, when I show it to you guys, it's got a lot of air bubbles, but that is perfectly fine. We're going to get those air bubbles out with the heat gun. And y'all know I despise using heat guns or anything. So, y'all forgive me. It's going to get a little there for a little bit, but it's going to be worth it in the end. Notice I'm not, I'm picking up it up my bucket when I switch it because I don't want it to scratch my paint. Usually I would do this. Hey Google, turn off the timer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to be off camera for just a second. I'm going to take one of these and I am going to pour some of the epoxy in here so we have it that we can tint. All right. What I am going to do now is I'm just going to give it a little final stir. I am going to kind of run it across. I am getting it all out and then I am going to move it with a popsicle stick. I'm going to move this off to the side. These popsicle sticks you can get at any of your dollar, general dollar, tree, uh, family dollar. And a lot of your bubbles will come out as you're spreading. And what I want to, and this is self-leveling, so please make sure that your piece of furniture is on a level surface. Before I start pushing it over the edge, I want to make sure that my epoxy is good all over the piece. See how amazing those colors are popping. But I'm going right up to the edge. Making sure that all of my piece on top before I start pushing it over the edge. Getting right up to the edge. And if I get a little bit over, it's fine. Because I am going to let it drip down the sides. And then I will show you how to get your ookies and gookies out. So I'm just making sure that it is completely covered. Because this will self-level out. You just want to make sure that you guide it and you let it know where you want it to live. Got to sound like Bob Ross. Before you push it over the edge. Make sure you get your whole top covered. You can see already those colors look just absolutely pop. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and just let it drip down. I'm going to hit my sides and let it drip over the sides. And I'm going to run. You might be able to hear it. It almost sounds like rain. It's hitting my plastic underneath. That's why the plastic is side. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw that one and I'm going to get me another one just because uh, my handle was not where I wanted it. And I'm going to push it over on this side and make sure that my sides are covered. And bring it all, make sure my corners, wiping it along the edge so every edge is covered with the epoxy. Going, hopefully this is coming up on camera. I'm sorry if it's not. But I'm doing my best, guys. I'm doing my best. Make sure, because this is my front. Making sure that it is all the way over. And I can catch the epoxy from underneath and swipe it back up in areas. And just going along my front, making sure that it is everywhere on the front. And also, one of the reasons that you use gloves, let me throw that in there, is that you can actually use your gloved hand and go along with this and move it with your gloved hand as well. You definitely don't want to do this. But I just want to make sure that it is all the way around the top and that my sides are good. There we go. Now what you can do is it's going to get a little noisy. It's going to get a little noisy because I've got my heat gun. I'm going to use my heat gun on low. And you can hear me crunching on that plastic. And I am going to just slightly hit it. You might see the bubbles bursting. And like I said, this is self-leveling. So once you get it all over, then it will, if you burst your bubbles in it with your heat gun or your hair dryer, it will level out. And that will give you an absolutely crystal clear no bubbles There's a bubble that just didn't want to pop, so I popped it with my finger. Get. Look at that top. Oh my God, this is gorgeous. I don't know if y'all can see it on camera, but it is babu. Just making sure that I'm going over all of it, making sure I don't have any more bubbles. I don't see any bubbles popping. There we go. I'm going to set my heat gun off to the side. All right. So. I've got another set of gloves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change out my glove real quick because, uh, well, it's a little difficult to open stuff. Ta-da. All right. Ick, ick. 
take them inside out. Let me get you guys back up. There we go. Now, remember, I had this little bit of epoxy over here. Um, actually, y'all are going to see the mess in my studio because I'm going to move the tripod over here. Okay. So, I've got these three items. I don't know if I will be able to cover all three with this. But what I do is, just a blank, I take just a bowl, plastic bowl, and I turn it upside down. See, I've cut more of my plastic tarp, put it down. This away, none of my pieces are laying flat, so they're not going to sit in that epoxy and pull up around the sides. So I just wanted to show you. So, let me get over to my other glove set. Again, this is the way my friend gave me the surgical gloves. And they're right and left. I need another right. Let me get my other set of gloves on. Sue and I discussed it, and we think, we thought, we came to the conclusion that we would really love to have put the Miss Lillian's in this epoxy top, but we thought it would take away from the colors. And so, but I really wanted to show you guys how you can tint your Miss Lillian's. And so real quick, let me get your idea for, you saw the three pieces. Should I use peach jade or should I use crystal blue? Got a few seconds to put your comments in. Peach Jade or Crystal Blue? Let me know what y'all think. Anne says, oh my, that is so fantastic. There are no words. Thank you. Miss Lillian's is here. Hey, I'm way late. It's all right. We've been rolling. Oh, that was Kathy from Reimagine Services. Okay, so... Chris, Barb says crystal blue. Anybody else? Mm, tough one, Tammy says, but I always love blue. Okay, so this is about a little less than four ounces. What I'm going to do is we are going to use the crystal blue metallic by Miss Lillian's. Now, it, you don't pour a lot. It's just enough to tint. And so I'm um, one, two, three, four, five. And as I'm stirring this, I will see if it is enough of a tint. And it's just going to give it a slight tint. I'm going to put one, two, three, four. Four went in. So I've done nine drops. And let me see if I can get you guys down again i'm just giving it a little stir you can see that it has just given it a slight tint and we don't have to wait we just need to stir it in just a little bit and get you guys over here there we go and we are going to do just I'm hoping to get to more than one project. And again, I'm going to just use my stick to move it around. It's just going to give it a little bit of a tint, a little bit of a shimmer, a little bit of a shine. And that's all we're looking for. Because when you use epoxy, you do want whatever's underneath the show, but this is a way to give it just a little bit of a glimmer, a shimmer, a glitter, if you will. And we're just moving it around the board. And I think that that blue, it's just enough, like I said, just enough to give it a tint. 
and then I'm going to go around and make sure I get my sides. And again, self-leveling. I do like to use my fingers, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit more down. And I'm going to leave it for just a second. And I am going to come over to this piece, and then I will hit the sides with my gloved hand. That way, I might have... No, we're going to do that. There we go. And let me see if I can... I'm going to show you guys... It's going to keep give it that wet look. And it's going to give it a shimmer. This is why I wore my gloves. I would never pick this up if I was in the studio by myself. But, okay, so we're going to put that in there. I'm going to take my finger. I'm going to take my epoxy around these edges. And then I will set it down. And yes, you can see once the paint underneath looks wet, you know that you've gotten the epoxy around the edges. And I can see that metallic shining through. It is gorgeous. Um, I don't know if y'all can see it or not, how it's got now. It's That is metalsmith patina. And if you can see, now it's got a little bit of glitter over top that metal smith. I'm going to put that down. I'm going to take my hand and go around the edge of this. And then hopefully, I should have put these projects at the other end of the table, but that would take a lot of forethought. And we know Krista doesn't have that. I am a fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl. And we're going to go around. And I'm wondering if I have enough for this cross. Let's find out. If not, I can always mix more. We're going to put that up there. Let's see if we have it enough on this cross. Move that right. There you go. Oops, almost grabbed it with the hand that I... This has metalsmith and gilding jewels on it. So this has patina and gilding jewels. And I'm going to take out the rest of my epoxy. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, baby. Oh, sound like Austin Powers. Oh, okay. So I'm going over the main, pushing it over the edges. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I will get the sides. Just want to make sure that all of my sides have the epoxy on it as well. Down the sides. Sorry if I'm not getting to your comments. I will before the end of the video. Give me just a few minutes and I will be all I will answer all of your questions from setup to what products to use. Making sure that everything looks wet. That is the key to getting your sides is making sure that everything looks wet. And so I am moving it a little bit. These smaller pieces can be difficult to get into the sides, but make sure you stay over your plastic. All right. Oh, that looks good. Let me see if I can make sure I get over the... Look at that. Okay. So, since I am done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these gloves. When you do it, an easy way to do it is as you're pulling, ball up your hand and pull it off. Of course, it's going to be difficult now. And then I take this glove, I keep it in my fingers, inside out, 
and then that way my epoxy is wrapped up in my glove. So let me see if my heat gun will reach the other side of the table. I did, I did put a fairly long cord on it. And then I'm going to hit these, making sure my butt doesn't hit my other piece behind me. And I like to go straight down, 90 degree angle to what you're working on. If you go from the side like this, if you go from the side like this, you could push it and make it flow. 90 degrees, straight down on the piece, getting all those bubbles out, getting my bubbles. Yay! Oh, those look so good! And as I'm going, I can see my bubbles popping. Even teeny tiny little bubbles I didn't know I had. I can see there's just a little bit popping. Okay, let me put this down. And let me get to comments. And I will pull you guys back over to the fairy cabinet piece. And, okay, so real quick, let me get to uh, questions and comments, and then I will very much attempt, oh boy, wow, Krista, look like I'm in a fun house. Ha! Okay, so let me go back. Um, Barb, Tammy, sorry, I had to scroll way up, and Renee said she glittered, glittered around. Renee says, y'all are superstars. Thank you, Renee. Tammy says, love how the colors are coming through. This is such an awesome technique to watch the other day. Sue, you did a fantastic job with the colorful wood grain. Yes, she did. Renee says, much neater than me. Um, Sue says, uh, me too. I'd have gloved my hands by now. I gloved my hands very early in this, guys. Tammy says, Christy, you make this look so easy. I haven't been brave enough to use epoxy or resin as of yet. Honestly, I was scared to death of it at first. The biggest thing you want to make sure of is that you're making enough to where you can do your flow coat and that you're going to cover the entire piece. Um, you don't want to not have enough to do a good flow coat. So, um, answers oh mine, that is fantastic. There are no words. Uh, Kathy says, hey, I'm way late, but I'm here now to catch up. Crystal blue, uh, crystal blue, crystal blue, crystal blue, blue. Okay, good. So everybody was on board for the blue. Um, gosh, that really is pretty. Thank you, Kathy. Tammy says, wow, that really brings those colors out beautifully, especially the blue one. Tammy says, oh, I hope you have enough to do the cross. I did. I thought I had it just about right. Tammy says, that is coming out saying, love the crosses. Sue says, epoxy looks gorgeous over Miss Lillian's paints. Yes, and especially if you use any of the metallics or if you use any of the, like the glitter jewels or the metallic jewels, really any of them, and you let it dry, then put this over top of it. As you guys saw on this, it just makes it instantly, like, amazingly, it just brings them out. And Kathy says, cool glove trick. Yeah, it makes it so all the ookies and gookies are inside. Um... That cross is stunning. Everybody likes it. Yeah, so Tammy says, I will just have to start super small and work my way up. 
So I was, honestly, I was scared to death at first of epoxy. And once you do your first piece, it's going to be like anything else you've tried. Um, I was apprehensive when I first started painting to do, you know, blending. And once I got that down, it was like I was blending everything. And then some people are, you know, you get to like the wood graining tool and Sue uses it all the time. I was intimidated at that at first. Everything new that you try is intimidating. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but once you get it down, a couple, a few, it, you're going to be knocking it out of the park left and right. It's just one of those things that you have to get your hands dirty. You have to get in and you have to attempt it. Mm. Ah, thank you. So, um, we've got uh, epoxy for the molds are supposed to come in Wednesday. Thursday, I will be pouring molds with the quick set resin that turns light. I will be doing that Thursday on painting with whiskey and women. And I will be posting up pictures to show you guys how this goes. <coughs> ah, dry throat. I turned off the air conditioner. Ah. So, um, if there's any questions, Again, um, well, let me see if I can, I'm going to try to get the camera out and show you guys close-ups <coughs> of everything. Um, we all know that I am not the best at this, but it's not going to be going back in the tripod. So, uh, oh, there we go. So, you can see the colors there and how they are just absolutely popping you can see the metallic the gilding jewels that we used underneath you can see them shimmering which is amazing turn the camera there we go it's amazing looking and then let me see if i can get you over over top of metalsmith and gilding jewels see the gold on the side is gilding jewels on that cross this is metalsmith i think that's actually neon metalsmith um whoops there you go neon it's so difficult to get you guys on camera like this there we go um and this was just a paint blend with some jewels that we did <sighs> sorry guys for the wonky angles happening before I say goodbye to you guys, one final tip is that after, oh, let me move my finger. After you let it set for a minute and it's running over the edges, take you a clean one. Let me see if I can see how the drippies are down here. Just take a clean one and go along the edge and get your drips off. And if you miss a drip or one happens in the middle of the night as it's curing and it drips down more, don't freak out. You can always sand it out, but that is a lot of extra work. So you want to try to get your drips as they happen. And that is what I am doing now is just going along and getting my drips And got one more side to do. Let's see if I can get you guys. There you go. Along, get the drips. So there you go. Guys, I hope that you, you learned something. I hope, and now you know how to tint your epoxy using Miss Lillian's. You don't have to go out and buy things because you already have it in your arsenal. So my lovelies, I will see you Thursday on Painting with Whiskey and Women with my girl Sue and much love guys. Bye.